watching CT22 with Eric Parker, sponsored by Hartford Healthcare. Welcome back. There are just over three weeks left in this year's legislative session. It's an even numbered year, which means the ses session is a short one, extending from February through May. At the start of the session, legislation passed to extend some of the governor's emergency powers. The legislature also passed an absentee voting bill, a bill extending outdoor dining access through 2023, and a temporary measure to lower gas prices. Joining me to talk about some of the bills also being considered this session are Channel 3 Chief Political Reporter Susan Raff and Dan Haar, columnist and associate editor at Hearst Connecticut Media. Thank you both for being back. Uh, I want to start with you, Susan. We talked about this last time you were here, the aid and dying bill, it's not going to get so out this year. So complicated. And, you know, it did pass out of committee this year, which uh, it did last year, but it's complicated. Uh, then they tried to keep it away from judiciary, but the fact is you can't in a committee like that because you're talking about death and, you know, people think that it is killing someone. Uh, they tried to put some felonies in there, but it is very controversial. It's a very heavy subject and it's also at the end of the legislative session. And I don't think lawmakers in Connecticut or many don't want to tackle that, especially not now. And uh, you said it did get out of committee, but unlikely to pass. Uh, Dan, you were saying in this short session, things that didn't get out of committee. Yeah, if they, in a longer session in the uh, even number of years, things can be resurrected during the behind closed doors period, which we're in now. Because the behind closed doors period is only three weeks, nothing is really going to come back. And in fact, many bills that did pass that are popular are not really going to have a chance. One thing you just wrote a column about was the electric vehicle bill. Yes. What's going on with that? Well, that's a, there's a big broad bill and there's one narrow issue. The one narrow issue is our favorite so-called Tesla bill. Now Rivian is here, so we can call it the Tesla Rivian bill. They want the right to sell their vehicles directly from the manufacturer. Other states have it. I think it's 13 or 16 states. New York has it. The car dealers are not collapsing. It's the system is working, and the Connecticut is. Many people think it's high time for that to happen. The votes are not there yet, but Senator Will Haskell is working the votes as hard as he can, and it might be there. The other electric vehicle bill is a broad thing that would do targets under the California standards, not the federal standards, for the large, heavy trucks and medium-sized trucks, and that's a big increase in the amount of electric vehicles that would have to be sold by 2030 and 2035. It also does subsidies for electric vehicles and e-bikes. All right. $500 subsidy for e-bikes. You mentioned how emotional aid in dying is. So is the hockey bill involving the 16-year-old who died in that ice skating accident, adding more safety restrictions for hockey players. What's the future of that bill? Right. There was a lot of passion for that. I believe Representative uh, Nicole Dietria, Claritas Dietria was the one who proposed that uh, after the death of a young student. Now, the CIAC, many public schools, they all require net guards when you play hockey. The private schools do not. So it doesn't necessarily affect a huge amount of students, uh, but enough. That did not pass it. It would be mandatory for it to be used in hockey games. What they've decided to do is have a task force to look at it to see if it should be mandatory. And again, we're really talking about private schools, private institutions. How about vaping, Dan? That's another big issue up at the Capitol, the vaping bill. Yeah, this is the second or third year that's been tried that would ban flavored vape. Uh, it's less stringent than last year's version, but nonetheless, the tobacco industry has managed to water it down. Or what do you do with it? How do you dilute tobacco? You, they, they've diluted it. And it may fail just because of that. There's a lot of power behind the tobacco industry. Powerful people, powerful lobbyists. It may not pass, even though it seems to make sense. The industry is arguing that it isn't helpful, that it doesn't actually. They, they cite a study in California. The advocates say the study in California was flawed, and back and forth we go. If it takes any time, it's killed. There was some uh, coverage a couple weeks ago of this uh, beach access bill. Is there anything going to be done before the end of the session, Susan, on beach access? I don't think so. I think that's one of those things in Connecticut that comes up every year. People talk about it, and I think uh, there's just not an appetite for it. And again, we have three weeks for the end of the session. What about Millstone? There's some nuclear power bills, Dan. Yeah, Millstone wants to rebuild a, 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 a uh, reactor. And that's not the same as building a new reactor, but the bill looks like they want to build a new reactor. It's not the case. They're going to get that probably because Millstone accounts for half the power generated in Connecticut, and it keeps prices low, and it's good for carbon, and we're already in the nuke business with Millstone. And, and so it's as they did with their pricing bill two years ago, they have strong hands and they're going to get that done. Right, and I think they're actually pushing for Millstone to uh, allow them to create more power. It is clean. Uh, you know, Connecticut is looking at wind power in New London, but that's several years down the road. But Millstone is antiquated. They're talking about, you know, phasing it out. But right now, they need the power. Yeah, Millstone threatened to close down 
four years ago, and the only thing worse than nuclear power is no nuclear power, so that's where we're going. That certainly got everyone's attention. France has them all over the place. Yeah, they don't care. They... <laughs> uh, Susan, I want to ask you, I want to shift gears a little bit away from the Capitol. We heard Bob Stefanowski in our last segment say about West Haven. You've been reporting on that story. Tell us what's going on there. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, uh, the state, MARB, which is the Municipal Accountability Review Board, has been uh, involved with West Haven's finances for about four years now uh, because they've had financial problems, but they've just amped it up to full takeover. Ha that has to do with the arrest of Michael DeMassa, a state rep who worked for the city who stole money. It also has to do with a uh, forensic audit, which founds, found that there were bonuses given, there wasn't any accountability. So this board has now voted to have a full takeover. It's not completely over. There has to be a, a, a comment period by people for 30 days, I believe, and then the governor has to sign it. But it's a pretty big deal for a full takeover. I think Waterbury, I remember that, and I think uh, Hartford, Bridgeport, not too many uh, cities have that. We had a chance to speak to the mayor. Uh, she's obviously very disappointed. You know, they've had, uh, they've made major strides. They have $2.2 million more than they had when Marb took over. But again, serious flaws in their finances. The only downside, maybe, of having a full takeover, the mill rate will probably go up uh, in that town because that's how uh, they assess things. And that's a real uh, downer for the people in the city of West Haven. Obviously, you know, they're dealing with the stigma of someone stealing money, this bad audit, and now their taxes are going to go up. And it's probably a TV anchor cliche word, but the embattled mayor for sure. It's an election year, Dan. Do you think West Haven and some of these other stories about the, the money wrote, is a big I, deal? I wrote a column. I think the governor is crazy to not pull up in a car at the curb, tell the driver to keep the car running, go and sit across from her in the office and say, get out and get back in the car and leave. They need to pull all support within the Democratic Party from this mayor. She shouldn't have won election the first time. She might not have. There's a lawsuit over 32 votes. She should be out. It's, mag it's madness. But people voted. Office. People voted for her, and, and not by a small uh, majority. But I do believe that politically she's under a lot of pressure. I asked her uh, if, you know, the governor or other people. The governor has been on record saying people in West Haven want a fresh start, but he will not say, I want you to go. She has no intention of going. She says she wants to see this through and uh, make all the recommendations she has to do. All right, we're all out of time. Susan Raff, Dan Hart, thank you both for being with us here on CT22. Great to be here. Thank Up you. next in our Sunday Spotlight, the Connecticut State Police Marathon team. They're going the extra mile or miles to help kids with cancer. We're meeting two of the runners tackling tomorrow's Boston Marathon. That's ahead when we come back.